What's up everybody, AnimeX here, and in this video, I'll be adding yet another part to the What If Naruto Was In The Onbu series. And this is due to you guys hitting the last like goal like I expected from you guys. So, in order to push you guys even higher, the like goal will be basically 4.5 thousand likes if you guys just want another part to this What If period. But if you guys want another part for tomorrow, then you'll need to hit 6.5 thousand likes. And I'm not going to lie to you guys. I think this may show a limit to your bower. But we'll just have to see when I put this video out. Anyways, as usual, I'll be recapping the last part of the video. Then jumping into the new material. So, without further ado. Let's get started. <laughs> Now, in the last part of this what if, we basically handled the rest of the tuning exams after the one month training period. During this one month training period, Naruto went to train with Jiraiya and he was able to very quickly learn the summoning jutsu and many of the other jutsus that Jiraiya would have taught him, or many of the other abilities I should say. After this or around this time, Naruto had an interesting yet short interaction with Gara, and basically we left the video off with Naruto bullying Neji and Naruto actually completely demolishing Gara from existence. <laughs> but that's where we'll jump right into the story with Naruto carrying Sasuke back to the hospital. Now, like I said, we left off with Naruto completely destroying Gara and taking an injured Sasuke to the hospital to recover from using the curse marks and training himself using the Chidori one too many times. Now, after dropping Sasuke off at the hospital, Naruto heads over to the foundation in order to get some rest of his own. He lies in bed and closes his eyes as he drifts into a deep sleep. As Naruto drifts off, the world around him starts to change as he starts fading into a dream world. In this world, all of Naruto's suppressed desires lay dormant within Naruto. In this world, Naruto is a true father and mother. He is also someone who at this point in his time has befriended both Sasuke and Sakura and lives as someone who is much more peaceful within his life. Naruto's dream is quickly disturbed as he senses a presence within his room in the real world, so Naruto being trained to be able to get up quickly, basically be able to fight immediately after sleep, abruptly wakes up and pulls out a kunai that he sleeps next to and spins and swings it at Sai who stops the blade with one of his own as he flips on one of the lights. Naruto, make yourself presentable. Donzo has our, our first mission for us. Naruto nods, now fully awake, and starts to get dressed in his usual Anbu attire as he ties down his armor plates and grabs both of his swords. Finally, I'm getting a mission. As Naruto gets ready, he tries to remember his dream, or at least get the gist of what it is about, yet as he tries to gasp the dream, it slips right away from it. Damn it, this always happens. Naruto is slightly annoyed that yet again he has forgotten yet another dream Basically, this seems to be a problem for him. I can never remember my dreams for some reason. He pushes his thoughts to the back of his head, however, and rushes out to greet Donzo and starts getting debriefed on the mission. Naruto, Sai, please step forward. The two then look at each other briefly and step forward before their head, kneeling before Donzo. I am entrusting one of the hardest missions that I can assign to any Leaf Ninja at the moment to you. This is something that I can't even trust with other Jonin to listen carefully. You and Sai have three primary directions in your mission, with some others coming secondary. The first and most pressing objective at this time is to kill Itachi Uchiha. Naruto and Sai's eyes widen ever so slightly since the legend of Itachi Uchiha echoes through the Ombro ranks even to this day. Our mission is to kill Itachi? Why so suddenly, Lord Donzo? Donzo ignores this question and carries on. The reason for this is because Itachi has severely injured a Jonin named Kakashi Hatake, who is one of the strongest shinobi in the Leaf Village at this point in time, and the fact that Itachi was able to take him down so easily is concerning. Also, it displays that he's not working with the Leaf Village like he said he was anymore. He is also in the way of some plans that I'll be having within the village, so you need to make sure to handle him. The next main objective is to kill Orochimaru. This stuns Naruto and almost floors him as he thought he killed him, but Donzo proceeds to fill him in on Haruzen's death by Orochimaru's hands. Orochimaru must pay for his crimes against the Leap Village, and the final objective is to retrieve Lady Tsunade and bring her back to the village in order to heal some of our casualties. Donzo then starts filling them in, all on the intelligence that he has gathered on all the objectives, position, and basically where they can find them, as Naruto and Sai prepare for the mission. 
Meanwhile, in the village, Jirai is just on top of a building, overlooking the village deep within his own thoughts, when he's approached by the village elders. What do you two old geezers want with me? Jirai says this as he chuckles to himself. This is a serious proposal, Jiraiya. We need to ask you once more. Are you willing to step up to become Hokage? Jiraiya just smiles and turns around looking over the village once more. I've told you guys time and time again that being the Hokage just doesn't suit my style. Although, I think I can find Tsunade and get her too. The elders and cut him off mid-sentence. Jiraiya, that isn't an option anymore. The ability to get Tsunade has been turned down. Jiraiya turns puzzled by this and demands an explanation. Well, you see... Now that Haruzin is dead, there's only one other person within the village who is qualified enough to fit this role, and we need a Hokage now, and that is Lord Donzo. I'm sorry to say this, but if you don't step up to become Hokage, we'll just have to pick Donzo to leave the village, and I know that you would hate that. Dry grimaces as he hears this, and knows that Donzo, knowing that Donzo will run the village into the ground if he gets control of it, he begrudgingly decides to accept. Damn, you two really have twisted my arm, but I give. I'll become the fifth Hokage for the Leaf Village. Now, after being assigned the mission, Naruto and Sai have been briefed on everything that Danzo and the village knows about Itachi, Orochimaru, and Tsunade's whereabouts, their weaknesses, their strengths, and all of that stuff. Danzo is only sending Naruto and Sai, who are his two strongest and most efficient Anbu Black Ops members, any more, and he figures that basically they'll be giving away their position to either Orochimaru or Itachi, who are basically very skilled and would basically be able to find a large team coming after them. Naruto and Sai then quickly gather their things and they head out of the foundation, preparing to set off on their journey. But before they go, Naruto goes to visit the hospital to see Sasuke off before he heads off. I promised you a sparring match back in our first mission. I promise on my life that we'll have that match when I bring back a medical ninja. Naruto then slips the mask on as he and Sai rush out of the village at top speeds, heading towards the objective that they think should be easiest to handle at the time. Sai, our first stop will be Orochimaru's hideout. Our intel says that it, in his fight with Haruzin, he was critically injured and lost the use of his arms within battle. We need to use this to our advantage and kill him while he's weakened. The only guard that we know about is Kabuto, but he should be the strongest one in that hideout at the time. Sai then nods as they continue to rush off. Now. After a few hours of running, they both spot the hideout in the distance. Naruto holds up his arm, signaling Sai to stop where he is. Alright Sai, get the bird ready. Sai then nods as he uses the beast art mimicry to summon an ink-based animal that Naruto and he decide to ride on. Naruto, make sure to erase your presence once we get closer. Naruto nods, and then closes his eyes as he quiets all of his thoughts. He takes in a deep breath, filling his chest with oxygen, and he slows his breathing to a near halt along with his heartbeat slowing at his command as well. Naruto and Sai then jump off of the bird and land on top of Orochimaru's structure silently. Naruto points in one direction telling him to go that way while he takes the opposite direction. Naruto and Sai then split up, both of them leaping off the opposite ends of the building and sneak their way in, bodying a few lackeys on the way in but are able to get in without making too much noise. Now, when Naruto gets inside, Naruto takes his short sword out. As and has it ready, not knowing when or who could possibly attack him at any moment. Naruto then starts walking around through the winding hallways, and just as I was about to turn to one corner, Naruto sees a shadow approach, and Naruto jumps straight up, driving his blade into the ceiling and grasping the hilt in order to stay above the ground and above the person who came around the corner. Once the Orochimaru lackey passes, Naruto jumps down and continues his search. Come on, come on, Orochimaru, where are you? Naruto then decides to risk being slightly low on chakra later and lifts his headband in order to search for very high chakra signatures using the Sharingan. Naruto looks around and finally spots one that Naruto suspects is Orochimaru. As Naruto walks through the corridors, however, he fails to realize that someone has located his position and has successfully stalked him throughout the hallways. Naruto then arrives at the door where Orochimaru lays bedridden. Naruto slowly reaches for the door handle, ready to attack and kill Orochimaru as soon as the door opens, when he senses the smallest hint of intent to kill, and turns around to see a white sharp object flying towards his face at extremely high speeds. Naruto sees this attack come at him, and with the Sharingan he is able to process this. The sharp object, however, nearly touches Naruto's bare eye before he successfully tilts his head ever so slightly, just enough to avoid fatal injury, although he does still get a cut across the cheek. Who is this guy? How did I not sense him earlier? Naruto then wipes the blood from his face as he stabs at the guy who attacked him. But as soon as the blade connects into his chest, it doesn't go any further than the skin, stopping right at the bone. What? How is this guy alive from that strike? 
Naruto then ducks again, dodging another attack from this seemingly invincible and impenetrable guy. Naruto then jumps back, gaining some distance from him while he tries to figure out this guy's abilities. Naruto looks at him with the Sharingan and slowly realizes what happened, and basically why his attack didn't kill him. It seems he has some sort of chakra membrane underneath his skin. Looks like I'll have to kill him besides puncturing him with a sword. Naruto then sheaths his sword, knowing that basically any sword strikes or any basically projectile based weaponry will not work against him, and disappears from the attacker's vision, then slams his leg into his throat, trying to cut off his windpipe, although Naruto feels his foot hurt from this attack. Damn, this armor is quite thick. Naruto then kicks off and lands on his feet. What is your name? The attacker then smirks. Kimimaru. And as you can see, I defend Lord Orochimaru. Who are you attacking my master? Naruto just smirks as well, showing off his fang-like teeth. I usually don't give my name to people that I intend to kill, but I'll make the exception for you since you're pretty strong. The name is Naruto Uzumaki. Don't worry about remembering it, because you won't have to for too long. Naruto then disappears again and grabs Kimimaro's neck. Then, with a swift movement, he twists his arm and breaks Kimimaro's neck, dropping him to the floor instantly. <laughs> you had a nice Keki Genkai, but it wasn't nearly strong enough. Naruto is then about to open the door, with Orochimaru behind it, when he finds himself being impaled by a bone that is going straight through his side. Naruto coughs up blood when this happens, as the pain of this makes Naruto lose strength in his legs. <coughs> Damn. Well, my luck is pretty bad right now. I wonder how Sai is doing. Meanwhile, while Naruto is dealing with Kimimaru, Sai is currently going back and forth with Kabuto, who he knows he can't allow to touch him or else the fight ends right there. Sai dodges each strike of Kabuto's and inflicts a slash or a slice of his own, which forces Kabuto to slow down the onslaught of attacks after a bit of scrapping. Sai quickly summons an art beast that attacks Kabuto and pins him to the ground, allowing Sai to rush to Naruto who he heard yelp out earlier. Sai turns around the corner to see Naruto being stabbed by Kimimaru and instantly yells out to him. Or Naruto yells out to Sai. Sai, don't worry about me. I'll kill this guy right now. You just have to handle Orochimaru. Sai then, without hesitation, jumps over Orochimaru and Kimimaru and runs into the room where he's held. Naruto then dislodges the bone from his stomach which spills tons of blood onto the floor, instantly making Naruto dizzy. Whoa, that's a lot of blood. Naruto then turns to Kimimaru as he looks at him with the Sharingan, barely maintaining consciousness. Kimimaru at this point is now transformed into his Curse Mark II state, which is why he was able to be much faster than Naruto and impale him. I can't believe that I'm going to be resorted to this. I'd rather just kill you outright, but fine. Naruto then makes eye contact with Kimimaru and puts him in a Genjutsu, which paralyzes him from the time for the time being. Naruto then summons some of Kurama's tracker to close the wound just barely in his stomach, although the pain in Naruto's chest makes it hard for him to really move, or even see at this point. As he struggles to his feet, the sound that he hears within Orochimaru's room tells him that Sai probably isn't doing too well against Orochimaru, at least not by himself. Naruto opens the door to see Orochimaru pinning Sai to the wall, using tons and tons of chakra and tons of snake, which forces Naruto to come in and slash through tons of snake heads, and as a result, free Sai. Naruto then tells Sai that he has a plan, and bolts directly out of the room, with Sai and Orochimaru following him closely. What is this master plan that you have, Naruto? As Naruto runs and turns a corner, he turns around and jumps, turning, spitting, and then spews a fireball that, with Sai dodging, burns Orochimaru as he comes around the corner. We have Orochimaru interested in us now. He should want to follow us, or at least send some of his men after us. We're going to have to dismantle Orochimaru's men completely. After we almost assassinated him, we'll basically have to retreat and attack later on the way back to the village. Sai looks puzzled as Naruto suggests retreating. Naruto, are you scared of Orochimaru? Naruto just starts laughing as they run, reopening the wound. Ah, ah. Of course I'm not scared, Sai. I could just barely function as I am now, so trying to fight him like this would be quite unwise and arrogant of me, don't you think? Naruto then slips the executioner executioner's blade off of his back and with four quick slices he cut through the nearest wall and he inside jumps straight outside the hideout and land on a bird that Sai produces using the beast mimicry. As soon as Naruto lands on the bird he lies on his back and closes his eyes finally allowing the heavy amount of blood loss affect him as he drifts off to sleep. When Naruto finally wake up he notices multiple things rather quickly. One, Naruto has bandages wrapped around his wound, along with some septics to keep the wound clean so it doesn't get effective. After a bit of twisting and turning and moving, in order to test his maneuverability, Naruto realizes that while sleeping, he had recovered most of the damage that Kimimaru had inflicted upon him. 
Naruto curses himself for getting caught up over a fighter that didn't have a crazy Keki Genkai, although he does realize that Kimaru had amped himself over 10 times in order to just injure Naruto. Naruto also realizes that he is in a village, or at least in a town, that should be on the way to finding where Tsunade was. Now, as Naruto walks around in the hotel room that he seems to be in, he starts looking for Sai, and he finds a note lying on the door, or lying right underneath the door. What is this? When Naruto reads it to himself, he sees that Sai decided to head to the village where Tsunade was last seen in order to get one of the objectives complete while Naruto remains injured and unconscious. Now, obviously after seeing this, Naruto knows that he needs to get ready to go help Sai retrieve Tsunade, so he puts on his Anbu clothing, and as he gets ready, he hears a knock at the door. Naruto pauses when he hears this. Naruto quickly decides to make a shadow clone instead of himself go open the door to see who it is, and to his surprise, it is one of the targets, Itachi Uchiha along with one of the bonus objectives being Kisame Hoshigaki. The real Naruto quickly sees this, picks up his blade, slipping it into his sleeve, and jumps over the Shadow Clone at Itachi, above the clone, and throws a punch at his face. Itachi, while surprised by this, grabs Naruto's hand, spins him before slamming him into the ground. Naruto then, after hitting the ground, jumps back, gaining some distance between him and Itachi, as he knows that he'll most likely have to go all out from the start. Naruto then takes out the Executioner's Blade, and as he does, this gets Kisame's attention. What are you doing with Zabuza's sword? Wait, does that mean that you were able to kill Zabuza? Be careful, Itachi. This one's quite impressive. Kisame then hefts his sword onto his shoulder, as Itachi takes a back seat to let Kisame enjoy himself. Don't overdo it, Kisame. We need him alive, so be careful. <laughs> Kisame just says that he's always careful, and charges at Naruto. Naruto sees that he obviously isn't seen as strong enough to efface Itachi himself, so he decides that he'll just have to mow through Kisame, basically, before he can get to Itachi. Now, Naruto then rushes towards Kisame at full speed, and swings his sword as well. Kisame basically defends with Samehata, and is able to parry the Executioner Blade, leaving the two in a deadlock clash. Naruto then starts deflecting Kisame's blade, leaving him completely open. Naruto instantly goes for it, leaping towards Kisame and rushing past him, using the blade that he had hidden within his sleeve, and stabs Kisame and then slices him up, basically inflicting mortal wounds upon Kisame, stabbing him in multiple vital organs and slicing him with deep cuts. Naruto then, after getting past Kisame, notices that for some reason he feels a lot more tired and notices that he has a lot less chakra than normal, and he turns around to see Kisame healing from all the damage that Naruto had inflicted upon him, draining the chakra that had been drained from him by Samehara. <laughs> that was quite impressive, kid. I definitely understand why Zabuza couldn't kill you. But if you think that that is enough to beat me, or even Itachi, you are sorely mistaken. Naruto then just gets up, and basically gives up a small cackle that then transforms into a larger, colder smile and laugh that shakes even Kisame up a bit. Oh, if you think I was going all out just now, it is you who is sorely mistaken, Kisame. Naruto then charges Kisame, dodging his blade knowing that it steals chakra, then bounces off of the ceiling, down back to the ground, bouncing around him as he rushes towards Itachi. Kisame, you are not the one I care to fight. It is Itachi who I need to fight right now. Itachi quickly brings out a sharring on as Naruto stabs directly towards his heart, and Itachi, clearly seeing through this ploy, dodges to the side and brings his foot up, kicking Naruto in the ribs, which makes him crack upon contact and slam Naruto in the ceiling before he falls back down to the ground. <coughs> Man, I guess I should have expected this from the legendary clan killer, Itachi Uchiha, huh? You were the youngest ninja to ever, en ever enter the Black Ops, huh? That's crazy. Naruto then slips on the mask and releases all of his bloodlust, which subsequently makes Naruto's eyes turn slit-like, basically taking on the persona of Kurama. It's time I've gauged the gap in our abilities, Itachi. Naruto then rushes towards Itachi, disappearing from Kisame's vision before reappearing behind Itachi. Naruto then extends his arm as fast as possible towards Itachi's back, basically seeing this as the one and only opportunity they may have to kill him, although Itachi quickly pulls out a kunai and blocks the strike effortlessly. Naruto's one eye gleams with excitement and glee as he continues to swing his sword relentlessly at Itachi, disappearing and reappearing in different areas, but this is all for naught in the face of Itachi's overwhelming strength. Then, Naruto, with a clash, brings out his other executioner's blade with one single hand and slices it down at Itachi, seemingly getting a cut. Then, following up, he stabs his sword directly into Itachi's chest. 
So this is the limit of Itachi's strength. Itachi then just smiles as he bursts into crows. Then, after Naruto realizes that he's been bamboozled, Itachi goes on the offensive, and Naruto starts feeling the pressure, getting cut and bleeding all over from Itachi's kunai. With a simple kunai, Itachi is able to outspeed and outmaneuver Naruto, even with the bloodlusted form, as he can't even seem to see most of the attacks that Itachi's throwing at him now, just dodging them based purely on instinct at this point. Naruto then leaps as far away from Itachi as he can and lifts up the headband from his eyes, which reveals a Sharingan underneath the mask. I may have to use this in this match against him. The Sharingan is the only way to... Naruto then gets a feeling, a cold feeling that sends shivers down even his spine. Itachi then just asks, why do you have that Sharingan? Naruto stops talking when Itachi rushes over to him and punches Naruto in the stomach, making him spit out blood. You are quite strong, Naruto. He then grabs his face as he slams him into the ground, but not quite strong enough against me. Naruto, as he is falling, then smiles underneath the mask. As he's on the ground, he sweeps his leg underneath Itachi's, genuinely catching Itachi off guard with this move, and for the first time, Naruto gains the advantage. Naruto stabs his sword directly at Itachi, seeing that this may be the one opportunity that he has to kill Itachi in this moment, and just as this happens, Itachi sees all of this play in his mind. This kid. He's really forcing me to use my Mongekyo Sharingan, huh? You are quite impressive. I see why Danza would recruit you into the Anbu. Now, as Itachi and Naruto's eat eyes meet for the briefest of seconds, Itachi's eye transforms from his base Sharingan into the Mongekyo Sharingan and uses Tsukiyomi on Naruto, making Naruto's legs lose feeling in them as he collapses beneath him and collapses onto the ground. And that, everybody, is where I'm going to end part 5 to the What If Naruto Was in the Anbu series. If you guys did enjoy the video, you know what to do. Body the like button. You, you know how it goes at this point, guys. If you want another part, period, 4.5 thousand likes. And if you guys want another part tomorrow, then make sure to hit the like goal of 6.5 thousand likes. To be honest, like I said earlier in the intro, I don't think that you guys will be able to hit it. But hey, you continuously, guys, you guys continuously surprise me on this what if. Anyways, if you are new to the channel and haven't already done so, consider subscribing and hitting the bell so you don't miss out on more What If Naruto content. Now, as always, I, I will leave links in the description below to like my Discord, Patreon, all that kind of good stuff down below, along with the previous parts of the series and even some other series that I think are darker themed if you are new and haven't already seen all the What Ifs on the channel. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always guys, this is X. Signing off.